Hello YouTube, it's Jesphonic here and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure to join the community by hitting that subscribe button for more videos around music production. You don't want to miss out. Thanks to everyone who's showed some love on my previous video and as I promised, I promised that the next video after that one will be focusing on how to mix vocals if you guys showed me the love of which you did. So yes, today we'll be uh, focusing on how to mix the vocals so that they sound dope, so that they stand out, so that they sound more audible more clean more crispy so that's what we're gonna be doing now for those who haven't watched the previous video we were busy learning how to make some mellow chords and how to build up a nice uh deep house track from those mellow chords in this video we're gonna be focusing on mixing the vocals so if you haven't watched the video please go watch it the link is gonna pop up now on the display but then still if you want to continue watching this video without having watched i'm just gonna uh, quickly replay the beat for you so that you get the direction of the song. Now let's replay it. As you can see i've removed the vocal from the mixer so we're gonna be now beginning to mix the vocal together from scratch no effects applied at this moment now after importing the vocal onto fl studio you want to make sure that you time the vocal right with the beat make sure that they are both in sync and are playing at the same bpm right um also if if, if they are not in key or if you wanna play around with the pitch until it sounds how you want it to sound you can play around with the pitch you can also play around with the keys. I'm not going to go too much deep into that because I'm assuming that when the vocalist is singing into the beat, they are going to already adjust their tone to match the key of the song. So the vocals as they are, are already at the same key uh, with the song. So this is the raw vocal. I'm just going to play it. No processing, no effects, no whatsoever. As you can hear, the vocal is still a bit poor, it's still blurry and it is not audible enough. Now what you want to do is you want to clone it. So you just go right click it and then clone. And then as you can see, I have that clone over here. I'm going to turn it on now. You don't have to do it this way. It's just how I prefer it. Some people prefer working with one uh, clip, some prefer two like me some prefer three or four it's all up to you it's just preference the reason why i like to have two clones is that it allows me to play around between the two clips so i can apply different effects to another clip and then apply different effects to another so it's just more dynamic that way 
Now, um, I forgot to explain what I was doing here. So you're going to pan one to your, to, to your right and then pan the other to the left. So as the song is playing, you're going to be hearing one vocal uh, clip on your left ear. And then you're going to be hearing the other on your right ear. And then let me turn that on. Now, the second thing you want to do is delay the other clip. You can delay it forward or delay it backward. So that's how you're going to do it. Just a minor delay like that. So let's play them both. You want to decrease your volume. All right. Now you want to link them to the mixer. Just hold control plus shift and then select both of them and then go to an empty track on the mixer and then hold control plus shift plus L. So now they are all routed to the mixer. You're just gonna decrease the volume like that for now. And then uh, we're gonna separate uh, the stereo. We're gonna do some stereo separation like that. Now what we're gonna do is mute the first vocal and then take this back. I'm gonna take it back again after. Right, and then apply an EQ, and then we're gonna apply a, a delay, and then pan it to one side, and then we're gonna also add a fruity balance just to make sure that we are at the volume that we feel like we're comfortable with, and then we're gonna apply a compression. So we're going to apply a fruity limiter. So for now, this is the order that I'm going to be following, but I'm going to switch them off for now. Now let's focus on our parametric EQ first. So what you do with your parametric EQ is just to remove the frequencies that you don't want. So on our vocal, there are low frequencies that we don't want. So that's what I did. You chop them off. You can chop them off completely or just uh, apply that shelf. Now with the fruity balance, we're just going to give it a bit of boost. We can take the volume up a bit and then now you want to go to your fruity limiter and do some compression. Now what the compressor does is it squashes everything that is beyond a certain threshold down. The reason we are doing this is because as the vocals are being recorded, uh, the microphone is in one position, one fixed position. And as the vocalist is singing, he or she tends to move forward and backward closer to the microphone and away from the microphone. So when the vocalist moves closer to the microphone, the vocals are going to sound very loud. And when he or she moves uh, further away from the microphone, the, the vocalists are going to sound a bit quiet. So we want to achieve a balance between the two so that there are no louder parts and there are no uh, quiet parts of the vocal so that everything is just um, constant we must achieve that balance by applying a compression um, what you want to do is take your ratio to 3 as to 1 and then lower down your threshold as you can see the compression is being applied there to the loudest parts of the vocal and then after that, we're going to apply some delay. Um, just set it to that 3S to 0 at the time and then pan it to the left. And then reduce the level of it. Now, the next thing you want to do is since we know these vocals are duplicates and they have the same signal, you just want to copy and paste um, all the effects you added to this one to the other one. 
we're gonna do the same for the fruity balance do the same for the fruity limiter and then do the same for the delay right so you just drag and drop like that and then we're gonna go back to our channel rack and pan it back to to the left now let's reduce the volume and press play okay let's reduce the volume of the delay now what we're gonna do is add a web send a reverb send um verb send and then on this track we're gonna add a reverb a fruity reverb and then increase your weight all the way up and then also increase your size there and then what you're gonna do is route that there and then route this as well there So what you're doing is slowly increasing it until we feel that the reverb is enough. When you feel that you're comfortable with the reverb, the next thing we want to do is apply parallel compression. Let me rename this. And then color it. Let me color it green. And then I'm going to route everything. I mean both the vocals to it now with the parallel compression what you're gonna do is we're gonna compress the vocal uh, we're gonna compress it so hard we're gonna compress it to the max if I can exaggerate we're gonna compress it fully right we're gonna squash it so hard I know it sounds weird but yeah you know with 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 production you don't want to over compress something but with parallel compression that's what we do but then you won't have to play all of the signal that's why we, we take down the the volume all right otherwise it's just gonna sound very very weird you're gonna take the volume all the way down as you can see there's a lot of squashing going on there's a lot of compression going on now the reason why we do this is because when you slowly increase the volume of the signal that is going into the parallel compression when it comes out of the parallel compression it's going to mix with the fresh and clean signal that is coming out of these tracks and when the two combined it's going to be a vocal that is fresh and a vocal that is fully compressed but just a small bit of it when they when the two combine it's going to be a very tight and very powerful vocal because here we have a very compressed vocal but just a bit of it right and then here we have a vocal that has a lot of dynamics in it because it is not over compressed right there's a lot of dynamics but then here there's no dynamics there's no freedom it is too squashed so that's why we want only a, a small bit of it yeah i hope i explained it well so now we're gonna slowly increase the volume
Now, since we have two separate clips, if you want, you can apply different uh, effects on this one. You can play around with the fruity chorus. You can even uh, change the setup of this EQ and then uh, boost some lows a bit. Right? You can do that. That is why I prefer having two separate vocals because I can play around with the other one and leave the other one undisturbed. It just allows me to be more flexible around them. I hope you guys learned a lot from today's video. Uh, likewise, if you are new to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you liked the video, please leave a like, leave a comment. Cheers, guys. I'll catch you on my next video.